of Police Area 5 Headquarters Assistant Commissioner of Police Gary Griffiths has lambasted Jamaican citizens for not showing enough respect and support to law enforcers in the country. Griffiths lamented that too many police officers are disrespected by many citizens who, in turn, lend their support to criminals who end up turning their weapons on law enforcers. Griffiths was speaking at Friday's funeral service for 32-year-old Constable Justin Martin, who was gunned down by armed men at a bar in Clarendon on Saturday, August 5, 2023. 2018, on completion of um, training, Justin joined us at the inner security measure, or the state of emergency at that time, and I was commanding. And it's rather unfortunate that at that time, he came to us because St. Catherine North, by February, had 30 odd murders, almost 40 murders. So you leave your family to be taking care of the same persons who find it within themselves to kill. And I need to say this because a lot of you sitting inside here are culpable because you all have family members who at times disrespect the police. Police boy, but they don't say gun boy, they say gun man. And all kind of disrespectful thing. So the police, I grew up at a time when police was respected. And if people were of the view that they won't get support when they kill police, it wouldn't be happening. But we hide them, we cover up for them, and we help them to disrespect the police. And what is unfortunate, but it's rather unfortunate, and I say this and I say it emotionally. A lot of policemen and women are coming much qualified than a lot of you sitting inside here. And they had choices. They could have refused to be police. They could have looked at the jobs. And they choose to serve with all the disrespect that comes with it. And we come here and mourn and we cry. And tomorrow, tomorrow, very few persons remember Justin Jr. Because the promise that we'll do, and we'll be there. And why I'm, why I'm so emotional, within the last two years, we have buried a host of police from that little unit, that unit which at the time we started losing police in numbers, was accounting for just about 200 police men and women. We lost three in one incident, three shot and killed. And we can laugh and talk about the police board and get shot up because that's how we see things. We have lost Justin. We lost a female, although it was an accident. Miss Blackwood, she died going to take care of an area that is filled with gun people, or gun men and gun women. I'm almost on my way out, you know, so I have to say these things. Because everybody wants a police at their doorstep, but they don't remember that 40 and 30 police have to be contained in one little spot because people can't behave themselves. And the gun is the order of the day. And we come and we put on a nice funeral. And we want to be out of here quickly. In anticipation of another burial. This, this is the kind of society we want to live. When are we going to change? We won't detain the congregation by going through these things. But we are sick and tired of burning up of police, men and women, whose only fault or only wrong is serving the people of Jamaica. What's wrong with doing that? Five more persons were arrested in downtown Kingston on Friday as operatives from the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch and the Criminal Investigation Branch, CTOC, continued their crackdown on extortion against public passenger vehicle operators. Known as Operation Transportation Streamline, the crackdown has resulted in 21 arrests for extortion and breaches of the Road Traffic Act. 
Operation Transportation Streamline, which was launched on September 4, is a joint initiative involving the police, the Transport Authority, and Island Traffic Authority. The operation is aimed at addressing a number of issues in the PPV industry, including extortion, overcharging, vehicular defects, and undisciplined driving. According to a release from the police, over 60 persons have been arrested and charged for overcharging passengers since the start of the operation. Meanwhile, over 50 registration plates have been removed for vehicular defects and persons charged, and more than 1,000 traffic tickets have been issued to PPV operators for various breaches of the Road Traffic Act. The police are urging members of the public to report incidents of extortion of any sort. Reports can be made to Crime Stop at 311 or the police emergency at 119. With the Sangster International Airport expected to welcome a record 5 million visitors this year by December, Transport Minister Daryl Vaz says he is satisfied with the ongoing efforts to expand the Montego Bay-based facility to accommodate the anticipated flow of traffic for the upcoming winter tourist season. Vaz made the declaration on Thursday following a familiarization tour of the airport, along with representatives of Montego Bay Jamaica Airports Limited, which manages the facility. The tour was held to review logistics and operations at Sangster International Airport in light of negative reports relating to incoming and outgoing passenger traffic and the lengthy wait times experienced by travelers. Ongoing expansion projects at the airport include enlargement of its roadway and parking facilities to allow for greater flow of vehicular traffic, as well as installation of self-service kiosks and biometric machines to reduce passengers' wait times for their flights. Shane Monroe, the chief executive officer of MBJ, outlined several other projects which are now underway to further improve the conveniences for the airport's users and facilitate the anticipated volume of arrivals into Jamaica. The ongoing expansion follow the Sangster International Airport's $10.9 billion runway expansion project, which began in 2022 and was completed on August 12 this year. That project included realignment work on sections of the nearby Kent Avenue and the creation of a new entrance linked to the Montego Bay Bypass. In the meantime, Vaz pointed out that the upcoming upgrades will take into account the amount of passenger traffic during weekend arrivals and departures in the winter season. An 18-year-old is to receive at least $200,000 in compensation after a corporate area man who is also facing murder charges punched her in the face, leaving her unconscious and hospitalized for two weeks. Sabuki Martin, 22, pleaded guilty to simple larceny after he robbed the complainant of her iPhone, Apple AirPods, and her bank card. It was shared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Thursday that the complainant was walking along Mark Lane in downtown Kingston when Martin punched her and grabbed her bag containing the valuables. Martin, who was also charged with assault, occasioning actual bodily harm, pleaded not guilty. He was remanded in custody until January 8, 2024, when he is to be sentenced for simple larceny. Martin was previously charged with murder, conspiracy to murder, illegal possession of firearm and ammunition, and participating in a criminal organization. It is being alleged that about 11.55 a.m. on November 1, 2020, Martin and a 15-year-old boy shot and killed 28-year-old Trevon Wilson at his house on Rum Lane in Kingston. Dream Entertainment has announced that dancehall artiste Tommy Lee Sparta is booked to perform at Dream Weekend 2024. This announcement makes the DJ the first artiste confirmed to perform at the 2024 staging and marks his first time back on the Dream Weekend stage since 2018. Celebrating its 15th anniversary at the 2024 staging, Dream Weekend organizers are gearing up for what is expected to be the grandest staging in the event's history. Scheduled for August 2 to August 6, 2024, the event will boast the pristine, white, sandy beaches of Negril as its backdrop. According to Ron Burke, festival director of Dream Weekend, we are elated to have Tommy on board for our 15th anniversary celebration. 
we know that Tommy is one of Jamaica's baddest artistes, so we had to ensure we book him as early as possible to secure his performance. As part of its 15th anniversary, Dream Weekend is offering a Diamond Club experience, which is a limited availability membership club. Additionally, through its concierge services, the company has hotel packages that dreamers can take advantage of and secure their accommodation with ease. Dance hall megastar Spraga Benz is rumored to be one of the 10 giants set to perform at this year's staging of Sting. The event, which is in its 40th year, will be held at Jam World in Portmore St. Catherine on December 26. Despite well-placed sources revealing that Spraga Benz is set to unleash his lyrical fury at the greatest one-night dance hall reggae show on earth, Isaiah Lang, CEO of Supreme Promotions, organizers of the Boxing Day event, would only say the lineup for the show is fire. The highly rated promoter said that entertainers from across the Caribbean have been calling and want to be a part of the show this year. So it's going to be a big deal. He said Las Vegas reggae band Bonafide and Japanese artiste Zenda Man are confirmed. In the meantime, Lang revealed that one special feature for this year's Sting is a pioneer hour between 10 and 11 p.m. in which veterans will perform some of their greatest hits. The show's launch will be held at the balcony in Kingston in November, but he is keeping the date a secret as too many people showed up last year. This year, it will be by invitation. Lang said he thinks Sting deserve an award because of its longevity and impact on reggae and dance hall music and the ability to bring people together from across the world. Sting will be streamed to 179 countries and will soon be hosted in international spaces such as England, parts of Africa and Japan by 2024. The Opposition People's National Party has labeled Jamaica's absence from a United Nations General Assembly vote for a humanitarian truce in war-torn Gaza as a new low in Jamaican foreign policy history. The resolution introduced by Jordan calls for the protection of civilians and the upholding of legal and humanitarian obligations in Gaza amid hostilities between Israel and Gaza's Hamas rulers, which has claimed thousands of lives. It was adopted with 120 countries in favor, 14 against, and 45 abstaining. Jamaica was among the countries that abstained, with Foreign Affairs Minister stating that consultations did not conclude in time for the vote. Despite Jamaica's role as the chair of the CARICOM Foreign Minister's Caucus, it failed to vote in support of the resolution, in contrast to CARICOM's agreed position. This absence of Jamaica's representative from this crucial vote is a new low in Jamaican foreign policy history, the PNP stated in a release. It said the government's excuse for Jamaica's abstention in the vote is unsatisfactory. This explanation lacks merit, as consultations should have been timed to enable Jamaica to vote in favor of the resolution, the PNP said, noting that the vote marked the UN General Assembly's first significant response to the humanitarian tragedy resulting from Israel's collective punishment on the civilian Palestinian population in Gaza. According to the PNP, the failure to vote gives the impression that the government of Jamaica is not interested in standing in solidarity with the suffering Palestinian civilians. <laughs>